Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to generate wind loads according to the ASC 7's main wind force resisting system for open structures. In this particular video, we will be focusing on creating the wind load definitions for the members in our open building structure, for wind acting on the structure in both the positive X and the positive Z global axis directions. Now before we create our wind definitions for this open structure, we will first take a look at how RAM elements will calculate the design wind pressure acting along the members. RAM elements will calculate the wind loads using the ASC 716 equation 27.3-2. During the calculations, you can either manually specify the aerodynamic form factor or you can ask RAM elements to calculate this value for you. To ensure that all calculations and code considerations are considered in your final design, we do recommend that you have your ASC 7 available as a reference when creating your wind definitions. We will now turn our attention back to our open sample structure in RAM elements. So the first step for creating our wind loads for the members in our open structure is to create the wind definitions. To start that process, we'll go to the Home tab and the Ribbon Toolbar, and then click on the Wind Load Definitions icon. Within the Wind Load Definitions dialog, you're going to enter all of the appropriate code parameters for your structure. And for members, we're specifically going to be focusing on this bottom half of this dialog. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to enter our general parameters and we're going to coordinate this with our project location. For the exclosure category, I'm going to enter an open structure and then I'm going to verify my building geometry information. Once I enter the top portion of this dialog, I'm going to advance down to the bottom. Now this first wind definition is going to represent wind acting on a structure in the global X direction. The global X direction means I'm going to enter a wind direction of zero degrees. Next, I'm going to go ahead and ask the program to either calculate my aerodynamic shape factor or I can enter a user defined value. With this option unselected, that means you're going to ask the program to go ahead and calculate it for you. Okay. Once we've entered all of our parameters, we can go ahead and click on the new button and name our win definition. Here I'm going to name mine X members. Now before I leave this dialog, I'm going to go ahead and also create the wind load definition for my global Z axis direction. Now all of my general parameters will be the same. My building geometry will be slightly different. And my wind deck direction, since I'm now going in the Z direction, will be 90 degrees. Click New and then name your wind definition. Now at this point, we are done creating our wind definitions for the members in our open structure. So I'm going to go ahead and click the close icon. Once you create your wind load definitions for the members, you're ready to then go ahead and apply this wind load to the members within your structure. The first step for doing that is to select the appropriate load condition. Right now, I'm going to focus on my first wind load definition, which represents wind load in the positive x direction. And this is specifically set aside for case A, which will come into play once we take a look at the roof system. Next, I'm going to go ahead and select the members tab in my data panel, and I'm going to go to the loading area. So this will be loads on members. 
Now within this area, there's several different types of loads on members you can apply. And the last icon is specifically for our wind definitions. Now that I've navigated to the appropriate area within the program, I'm going to select the members for which this is load applies to. Now for this particular model, I went ahead and created member descriptions for all the members that I want to assign my wind load to. So I'm going to select one of the members within my model. I'm going to select one of my columns. I can go up to the spreadsheet tab of my ribbon toolbar and select the by description icon. This will ask RIM elements to select all the members with the same description. For this particular model, that meant for me, every single member in the model, except those that are specifically belonging to the roof system, which will get the panel area load assigned to them. Once I've identified my members, I can ask the program to assign my wind loads. Here, I'm going to select the X members. This corresponds to the load case that I'm currently working on. Now within this dialog, I can see all the input values that represented that are represented within this load definition. And if I wanted some additional information, I click on the view report button. Now this will provide me with all the wind loads that were calculated through this process. If I wanted to kind of double check any of the variables or the final wind loads that will eventually be assigned. Now, if I'm satisfied with everything, I can go ahead and click OK. And I'll be able to see that wind load definition that is assigned. Now, if for whatever reason I want to delete that wind load definition, I can go ahead and click this icon here. And then as a reminder, if anything within your wind load definition changes, say for example your basic wind speed changes, you do need to go ahead and just reassign that wind load definition. It's also important to remember that only one wind load definition can be assigned to each member for each load case. Now on your screen, you should be able to see the distributed member loads being applied to the members. This is a great way to go ahead and visualize which direction the wind loads were acting in. Now as a reminder, within this wind load definition, since it's being applied to members, you do need to enter a direction of wind. So zero degrees meant that I was applying this in the X direction. Now let's go ahead and move on to one of my Z load cases. So within the load conditions pull down menu, I'm now going to select my first wind load in my Z direction. Now my members are already selected, so I can go ahead and just move forward to assign the wind load definition. And this time I'm going to select the Z members definition. And we'll just go ahead and click OK. Now, as a reminder, a direction of 90 degrees was provided for this wind definition, which corresponds to load acting in the positive Z direction. Now, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and save my model. And this concludes my process for assigning wind loads to members in an open structure within RAM elements. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.